here's the point, is that if we are going to try to segregate the American populace based on skin color, that is the very definition of everything that we have tried to fight against in this country, everything. And d despite even historical and statistical trends, it just, it just isn't true. There's twice as many white people living in poverty in America than black people. Do What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Hey guys, we're back here on new video guys today. We're going to be checking out Raka built her attempts to outsmart Charlie Kick. Okay, this is going to be amazing. I would love to check this video out with you guys. Let's get right into it. Uh, as a Latino in this, in this country, I kind of want to ask your opinion on uh, white privilege because sure. I think I saw something on Facebook. Someone shared like a video or a picture and I kind of want to just get your views on it. Um, if you could, please. Awesome. Uh, white privilege is racist. White privilege is a lie and it is a myth. Could you elaborate? Happy to. Happy to. Um, white privilege is racist. Let's go through it. As soon as you begin to categorize certain individuals based on skin color, that in, that in, in, in of an essence is racism. True. It's, it is. If you say, oh, you're privileged because of your skin color, are you kidding me? I mean, you don't know about my background or my, you know, my upbringing. All of a sudden you're generalizing an entire group of people just based on their skin color. That is racism. The definition of racism is putting a specific definition onto a group of people based on their skin color, a prejudice just based on their skin color. That is racism, whether it's a good prejudice or a bad prejudice, that is racism. Is it a lie? Absolutely it's a lie. Hmm. Now, do our, have uh, Caucasian Americans generally done better over the last you know, 100 years? Yeah, that's correct. But there's also other communities that have done much better. Asian Americans, for example. I never hear about Asian American privilege. Asian Americans are the wealthiest, most productive, least likely to commit crimes, members, members of the American community. Um, where's their privilege? Is their privilege based in skin color? Absolutely not. There's privilege based in making good choices. Hmm. When you make good sure. choices, those choices are rewarded. Um, Asian Americans entered mostly in the 1940s and 50s fleeing communism and Marxism. By doing so, they came into the American community widely discriminated against. In fact, if you ask your grandparents what they think of people from Asia, they won't say very nice things especially your great-grandparents if they're still alive. Um, they made very good choices. They did the three things you needed to do to stay out of poverty in America, according to Ben Shapiro, which is you got to graduate high school, get a job, and get married before you have kids. And over the last 60, 70 years, they are by far the richest uh, group that you can point to based on race in America by far. So here's the perplexing thing, is that I said it's racist and it's a lie. What else did I say about it? I said something else. Is it meat? Um, it's very divisive, extraordinarily divisive. Because if you're going to start to categorize people just based on their skin color, then they're nothing more than that racial group. They're not an individual. It's not saying that you could rise above your circumstance. It's not saying you can make good choices. It's not saying that, oh, you might have been born behind and you can get ahead. Um, we want to talk about white privilege. Here's a good question. And anyone who, who, who here believes in it, please step up to the microphone. We can have a discussion. It's a little, um, it might, not, I don't, anyone? Is, are Jewish people considered white? Technically, they uh, are. If you consider their history, uh, I would say not. No, oh, they're um, not white. Then what are they? They're Semites they're from the Middle East, at least historically speaking. Um, okay, so we don't have that as a box to check on the U.S. Census Bureau. I think there should be. There's a. There's oh, a, okay. So they should be Semites. Okay. Well, not Semites, but. Well, I mean that is the technical def that is the technical definition. But for lack of a better term, they are considered white. Yeah. So let here, let's go to this. I don't think it's a monolith, though. I mean, I think you can definitely if you identify as white and a Jew, like that's fine. But I know like there are a lot of people who have a lot of connections to, especially like Israel. Yeah. Um, so but here, here, here's the point. Here's the point. Is the question is if you categorize them as white, which you don't, most do. Did they really have that good of a 20th century? Did they were they really privileged over the last hundred years? Really? No. Yeah. They had an extermination order put up against them in an entire continent. Here's the point is that if we are going to try to segregate the American populace based on skin color, that is the very definition of everything that we have tried to fight against in this country, everything. And d despite even historical and statistical trends, it just, it just isn't true. There's twice as many white people living in poverty in America than black people. Do they mm. live at a higher rate? True. Absolutely they do. You talk in aggregate, aggregate numbers, it doesn't reflect to that. So look, here's the point, is that it is anti-individual, and it is very much this idea of racial group collective that I think is extraordinarily harmful and creates this victimhood mentality that pits one group up against the other, that, that does not reward 
what America truly is, which is a place where good choices will eventually be rewarded. Go ahead and say something in response if you want to. Uh, yeah, just, I guess one follow-up question. Um, so you don't think that uh, specifically regarding the United States, like the crippling like systematic oppression of like the 60s and before that has like any kind of effect whatsoever on African-American communities? Great question. Okay. I'm glad you asked that. Say it again. So um, say it again because I can, I want to. Uh, do you think that the systematic oppressive laws of the 60s and prior to that have any kind of effect whatsoever on African-American communities today? Sure they did. But didn't the uh, internment camps against Asian-Americans in the 40s have something against them? They rose above it, right? So here's the question. Is America more racist today than we were in the 1960s? It's a legitimate question. Is anyone, can anyone possibly say we're more racist today? No. Then why are blacks worse off today than they were in the 1960s? It's not because we're a more racist country. We're much less racist in every single metric. It's because we've incentivized bad behavior over the last 60 years. Black single motherhood was 18% in 1965. It's now 71%. What happened? Is it because we got to be a more terribly racist country? No. Did we get more racist laws? No, we actually got rid of most of all of them. Civil Rights Act, we got rid of almost every single one. So what, what happened? It's because we incentivized really, really bad behavior. We said to single mothers, go ahead, have kids, and we'll give you a check every single month. But don't get married. As soon as you get married, you lose the check. We put, we put African Americans in urban areas in housing, housing projects that, again, incentivized bad behavior. And that was the advancement of the American welfare scheme. Mm. Propagate also coupled with um, failing public schools, run mostly by teacher unions that were not properly incentivized to try to get the people out of poverty that were very much in. By every single me metric, African Americans are worse off today than they were in the 1960s with crime, prison rates, single motherhood, employment, wealth capita, everything. And there's only one possible explanation for that. It's not that America got, got more institutionally racist, none of that stuff. It's that there was a set of policies put forth by one president and continually supported by entire political party to keep a whole segment of the population poor and routinely voting Democrat. And that's Lyndon Baines Johnson and the American Democrat Party, which um, I think completely punished it. So if you want to talk about systemic oppression and racism, there's lots of other examples of ethnic groups that went that, through that too. If that's the card you want to play, it, it does not couple. Almost every single one except African Americans and Native Americans have not rose above it statistically. And the only thing they have in common is absolute total government interference and involvement in their life. Go, we'll follow the question. If you say any word of what there are white privileges, that is a lie. I will tell you that for free. When someone say there's a white privilege, that person is a racist. That person is against white people. <laughs> I mean, they say it like that. That person is a racist. There's no such word like that. It shouldn't even be a word being spoken out. It's people who are insecure of their self or also about their skin that use such word and are against this on other skin color that use such word. Can it always keep on saying this? White privilege is a lie. There is no such word like that. People who use that word are racist. And Charlie just said it right here. It's as simple as that. A lot of people are just trying to use diversion and confusion to confuse us, to bring out the word white privilege. So this racism of its own will spike up more. I've said this before. 80% of crime rates that is increasing in black people, black homes are because of single parenting by their mothers. Used to park, for example. How he was brought up. I know he's, he's, he grew up to shine out his light, but why growing up? Did you observe his growing up stage? It was a struggle because he wanted to fend like a man in the house, so he had to go and do some crime. He sang it in the song, Dear Mama, if you have listened to Dear Mama before. He sang it right there. He did some, some business because why he wanted to provide food. He was being brought up by a single mother. That is what we are saying now. This is increasing every time in black families. Single parenting. It's bad. But if black families still don't want to accept it. And they will keep on saying white privilege is this white privilege. They have privilege to be like this. They have no. So what are we going to call about the Asians or the Indians? Is it their skin color? No. So I love how Charlie handled this. this 
topic, this issue of white privilege, I love how he handled it maturely. I love that. Uh, this was beautiful to watch. I learned a lot from inside too. And I love how Charlie explained it. Even a layman can understand this. That's why I just pay attention to it. I listen more than pause and talk my feedback. I just want to listen more and watch. I understand it. I hope you all understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Because a lot of people are saying they don't understand my English. So I hope I'm not rushing it and you guys are getting my words properly. And this was an amazing video to watch and I enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, I learned from it and make sure you stay away from anyone who uses the word white privilege. So comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video as many as can. Subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales on.